Hi, I'm gonna introduce you to our Ready to Teach content on the Data Classroom blog um, and uh, walk you through this example of measuring water quality with biodiversity and show you how you would do this activity and have students do this activity. So uh, first thing I wanna say is you can find all of this material on our blog. Um, if you go to dataclassroom.com, uh, you will come to the website. Unless you are logged into the app, then you will go to the app. If you want to uh, just visit the website, it's about.dataclassroom.com, and then this page is backslash blog. So here we are at the blog. Um, just want to scroll through these tiles. The majority of these are ideas for things you can do in your classroom, and anything you see that's marked ready to ready to teach, like you see here, um, that's going to be uh, an activity that is an idea for something you can do with your with your class. If you see uh, a post that is not marked with ready to teach, this is, is something that we think will be of interest to, to teachers only, but it is not a, a lesson for you. So you can scroll through these tiles to see what we have here. Uh, when you get to the bottom, you can click this older and it will show you even, even more blog posts and ready to teach ideas. But I'm gonna scroll back to the top and click on this measuring water quality with biodiversity. So I uh, go ahead and click on that tile and it takes me into this data activity. Uh, this was one that we made in conjunction with um, Henrico County public school teachers at, at, uh, in Henrico County, Virginia. So this is an activity built around the classic field trip activity where you sample benthic, that's bottom dwelling, uh, macro invertebrates, uh, and you sample them to use as a biological measure of, of water quality. You do not actually need to do sampling to complete this data activity. We've taken a, a rather large data set that was compiled in Pennsylvania, and we, we've put it in there so students can analyze data from this activity. If you are actually interested in doing the field trip, I just want to point out that we have created this, this macro invertebrate field guide. I'm just going to click on this for a second. Um, and this is something that you could uh, print out and use, use Streamside to identify um, the, the different critters that you would pull out of a stream. Um, it also, at the end of the guide, has the, the um, animal taxa into groups uh, based on their pollution tolerance. So you can actually uh, calculate a, a pollution tolerance index for your, for your stream and that you can print that out. And, and do that. But we're going to do the data activity now, which will not require us to, to sample invertebrates. So let me just show you what this, this uh, activity looks like. So every activity um, will have a background. And this is, this is stuff that you can use to introduce your, your students to the, to the data set. Um, you can also see it will have the data set itself. And here in bold, you can see that each of the variables in the data set are explained here. So you could use this or provide this information to a student to help them understand the, the data. Um, if I click this button right here that says play with the data set, I'm gonna jump into the app and, and begin at that data set. And I'm gonna do that in just a second. But I also wanna show you that there's a claim evidence reasoning activity that goes with this where we have four claims and your students can um, use the data set as evidence to support these claims and, and they'll actually be constructing graphs of the of the data to do that. So um, I'm just going to click on this for a second so you can see I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download the, the CER activity um, and here it is and I actually have it open on another tab so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the, the blog post. Um, I have it I have the CER activity again open right here. You'll notice that the, the first uh, claim and evidence and reasoning has been filled in for students as an example. And we'll, we'll come back and, and work on the, the other ones here in a second. But I'm gonna jump back to the blog post. Um, and I guess it's time now to, to go and play with the data set. So I'm gonna click play with the data set and that will bring me into the app and I'm already logged in. So it'll just shoot me right past the, the point where I have to enter my password. If you were not logged in, you would enter a password here um, and then you would come into this data set. But uh, I wanna point out a couple things of the data set. You can see 
Each variable is listed with a column header here. So for example, station ID, richness, Shannon diversity index, percent intolerant mayfly, percent dominant taxon, uh, riffle frequency, riparian vegetative zone, total habitat score, and total watershed area. Each of those are variables. If you scroll down, you can see all of those are filled in with, with values. Um, if you want to see the full data set, click the show all rows, and it will show you um, there are 195 rows or 195 observations in this data set. Something else I want to point out, when a student's here, if they want to know, they have maybe they want to know what this variable means, like riffle frequency, for example. If this description box right here, so this is up here, this is the story behind the data set. It's all the background. It has the CER activity with claim one, claim two, claim three, claim four. It has links to the, to the claim evidence reasoning and also has a link to the field guide should they be interested in seeing that. I wanna point out, you can expand this box right here, this arrow. If I click that, this, this will get bigger and get a little bit more readable. I know the font is small. If you, you can also uh, use, your, use your browser to zoom in and, and make that more readable um, if that helps. So uh, whoop, I made my screen too big there. I'm just gonna zoom out again. There we go. Um, so you, you can see that can improve the, the readability of that. Um, I also wanna point out, if you wanna customize the activity, you can click this pencil and now this is an open field and you can write anything you want in here. You can remove text, you can add text. Um, that is up to you, uh, how you how you edit that text. So I'm gonna finish that and we're gonna jump into the activity. Okay, I'm gonna resize my screen a little bit better back to there. Okay, so um, with this with this activity, it's all it all centers around um, making a graph. So just want to point out, we're gonna go over to the CER activity, then we'll come back. But I'm gonna I'm gonna click this uh, yellow make a graph right here. Click that, and now we're we're in the graphing window, and you can see. The, the default up here is I have uh, riffle frequency on X and I have richness on Y. You, I'll show you how easy it is to change those, those variables around uh, as you go. And um, you're gonna use these graphs as, as evidence in the activity. So um, I'm gonna click on the activity for a second, the CER activity, so switching tabs. Um, you can see here, the first one is done for you, and let's just break that down and take a look at it. Claim, the first claim here, highly oxygenated water promotes biological diversity. So what is the evidence for that? Well, here you can see this plot with riffle frequency on X, and I wanna point out riffle frequency is a proxy for oxygen level in the water. The greater the number of riffles, the higher oxygen in the water. And students would be able to get that by reading the background or that description, which lists that variable riffle frequency and, and talks about how it is an indicator of how much oxygen is in the water. On the y-axis, you have Shannon diversity index. You could have put richness or any of those other measures of, of species diversity, biological diversity, but I went with Shannon diversity index. And so you can see increasing numbers on the Shannon diversity index indicate higher biological diversity. The default here is to have the regression line on to help students spot the trend. And you can see this is, riffle frequency is not a perfect predictor of, of diversity, but there is a trend where greater riffle frequency, you see an upward slope on this line, you see greater diversity um, as riffle frequency increases. So. This is the evidence. I cut this plot out and, and placed it in here, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But that brings us down to the reasoning. There's a lot of different ways students could answer this. This is just an example. Uh, riffles allow more oxygen to get into the water in a stream. These data show a relationship where streams with more riffles and likely more oxygen tend to have greater species diversity as measured with the Shannon diversity index. Students can kind of use that as a template for how they would answer the other one. So let's take a look at the second claim here. The size of a vegetative zone along a small stream 
affects the biological diversity of invertebrates within that stream. Okay, so the size of a vegetative zone has an effect on the diversity in the stream. So we need to look for two different variables. One that measures the size of a vegetative zone and two, one that measures biological diversity. Okay, so let's go to that data set again and let's look for a variable that measures diversity. We could use this richness like we have here. We could use Shannon diversity index. Uh, we could even look at percent dominant taxon, although that's that one's a little bit different. So I'm, I'm actually fine. Let's keep richness here. And then let's now look for a variable that indicates how much riparian vegetative zone there is. And right here, you see this variable called riparian vegetative zone. I'm going to click show, graph this column, and it turns green. And now over here on the right, over in this area, you see what's currently on the plot is lit up in red. You got riffle frequency on X and you got richness on Y. We want to keep richness on Y, so not, nothing. we don't need to do anything there. But we want to take, uh, instead of riffle frequency on X, we want to put riparian vegetative zone on X. I'm going to make my screen full, full screen here. Um, and I'm going to click riparian vegetative zone as X and now you see it, be, it becomes red because it's now showing on the x-axis here, riparian vegetative zone. And riffle frequency is now not showing because it's, it's grayed out. And so this plot, we can actually see a very similar pattern. The greater the riparian vegetative zone is, and I believe that's measured in meters, the greater the species richness is. We see this upward sloping line. And again, if you want to take away the line, you uncheck this box. If you want to make it come back, you check this regression line box. So there, there we have it. That plot could be seen as some evidence that the riparian vegetative zone affects the diversity in this stream. So I'm going to try to take this out now. I'm going to see this camera icon here. I'm going to click it to copy this image to the clipboard. And it's loading up on the clipboard. Then I'm going to click copy and done. So now it's on my clipboard. So I go back to my Google Doc here and I'm going to paste it into this right here, paste the graph from Data Classroom. Uh, I'm going to actually I'll just get rid of the text here and I'm going to paste it in right here. See it's getting pasted and there it is. I'm going to actually move it, move it up. There we go. Um, so we can see this is richness on Y, riparian vegetative zone on X. This is my evidence, right? So here's the original claim. The size of a vegetative zone along a small stream affects the biological diversity of invertebrates within the stream. And um, now I need to have some reasoning here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete that and I'm going to go ahead and enter in my my reasoning, I also wanna make my text, instead of gray, I'm gonna make it black, okay. So what is what is my reasoning here? Well, um, we'll say something like streams that have larger riparian vegetative zones tend to have greater species diversity as measured by richness. And so that's at, at its heart, that, that's basically it. I could, I could add, the, you know, this is illustrated by the upward slope of the best fit line um, when where that period when uh, richness is on y and vegetative zone is on x. So that's it. We've taken the claim. We've dropped in some evidence, and we've explained the reasoning. Um, this is the activity that your students would be able to do. And then they could turn this, this Google Doc into you uh, in whatever format 
they uh, are used to working with. So that's it. If you have any questions, you can reach me at Aaron, that's A-A-R-O-N, at dataclassroom.com. Good luck with the activity and, and all the ready to teach content.